Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So, yesterday we had our very first pastured pig workshop um, here on the, here on the farm. We had 13 folks registered. Had a couple of folks that um, didn't make it. One had a family emergency. Another one, um, the fuel, the whole fuel shortage. Um, he got part of the way. Couldn't find any fuel. Was afraid he couldn't get back home. Certainly don't blame him for that. But anyway, um, had our first class yesterday. Let's show a little bit of footage from that how that went um Sondra got Sondra involved in the game a little bit she talked a little bit on uh, uh doing cut sheets and uh processing and all that kind of thing that's her forte she's really good at that so let's roll a little bit of that footage kind of show how that went and um down here at the piglet pen our little catch pen and our piglet box trying to move some more piglets out having some challenges with that so let's talk a little bit about that but uh, hang out with us on the farm fair here for a little bit and uh let's see what the evening brings Remember in your math, the way you figure out percentage is 180 divided by 250, that gives you 57%. So that means you know if, if you... If it's a 285 pound peg, you you're going to get 57% hanging weight and then uh, Piedmont Custom Meats charge is $1.05 per, per pound hanging weight. So none of these cuts, we could have them cut however we want. It's not going to cost us more or less. It's not going to cost you anymore. When you start adding the cost is when you go to that back page. Okay. You start adding ingredients, you start adding smoke. Further processing other than just cutting it up. And is there a set fixed price for these additional? Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what they are right now. But they're on their website too. And you just look them up. And yeah. They're really good. So you can get within twenty or thirty dollars of what you're gonna uh, owe. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about some marketing stuff. Um, it sounds like some, if not uh, some, if not most of y'all, are interested in doing retail stuff by the cut or by the animal to customers and selling as part of a as part of a farming enterprise. Um, like I said earlier, we originally had started out doing all, we were going to go all in on chicken. And then I kind of got shifted into this pig thing. Frankly, moving to pigs, moving to pork has been the best thing we could have done financially. Uh, outside of beef, <clears throat> pork is our most profitable enterprise. That's the most profitable thing that we do here on the farm. Um, so pork is, pork is a moneymaker. The old timers didn't call them mortgage lifters for nothing. Um, That's what I got to say that would be yeah, probably did. Um, and I've got a video. You go back and look. Now, this was last year's numbers on this site. And it's got a snap up there at the top. There you go. Um, we'll have to reevaluate going forward this year. But we were we were capturing $1,000 net profit, not gross, net profit per pig last year on retail cuts. We, we were, it was costing us. The numbers escaped me right off. It was costing us about $450, $500 to raise that animal out and process it. Retail cuts, we had about $1,500 in retail cuts. So we were we were netting somewhere around $1,000 per annum. So it, it was a profitable enterprise for us. So that's just a little bit of footage from our pasture pig class that we had this weekend. Had a really good day. Um, got some good feedback from the students. Um, leading up to that, we had posted some pictures and some stuff that we were getting ready to do that class and had some folks reach out to us on uh, Facebook and that kind of thing um, inquiring about registration and by that stage we were kind of full and we were sort of at the end of uh, the end of the line on being able to accommodate additional folks but if you'd be interested in coming to a pasture pig class uh, workshop here at the farm what we do it is primarily directed at folks that are just getting started thinking about getting pigs or have maybe had pigs for a year or so and want to see another farms operation and see if they can pick up some tips and tricks and things that uh, that might help them on their farm so if you'd be interested in doing a pasture pig class, leave me a comment down below that you'd be interested. Um, we're kind of gauging interest now to see if uh, see if that might be something worth doing uh, later on in the year. So leave me a comment down below that you'd be interested in the class. 
I brought a little feet out and uh, trying to re-entice some of these piglets back into the catch pen because I think they're wise to our game. Um, I think part of it, we've had trouble getting them in the pen. We're going to catch a bunch. We're going to try to catch some yesterday for our pasture pig class. And we were having trouble catching them up in the in the catch pen. And I think two things at play. Number one, they are they're kind of figured this out. And also there's not as much competition on the moms to nurse. So there is a glutton of milk. So I came out, cleaned out the catch pen because we had a bunch of wasted feet on the ground, cleaned it out, and then refed them. And so got a few over in here. So we probably could get uh couple more caught up in the morning because we're just about done with these big ones and all we've got left are just the smaller ones that were born in the past three weeks or so and they're certainly not ready to wean yet so a couple of these guys are definitely ready to go uh, we got to get them got to get them caught up and get them moved because we've got everybody got everybody spoken for and got some customers coming to pick up sold our first two this evening um, our good friend Johnny uh, swung by picked his up Picked out a real nice uh, girl and a nice cut male. I think those are going to do really, really well for him. And excited to hear how those pigs do on his farm. But uh, this one right here, this little Berkshire boy, I think I'm going to end up keeping him out for a breeder. And then Sondra likes the looks of this red, this little red girl right here. She's gorgeous. Put an egg over in there. Had a bunch of eggs, excess eggs tonight. So I gave him an egg to kind of entice him a little bit. But everybody seems to. Uh, still be knowing what to do on the feed so we're going to try to catch some more up tomorrow and uh, and see how that goes so we're out here with our girls um we're working on weaning all the piglets off um got some of these girls that are starting to dry up this last uh dark colored sow right here uh she's still bagged up pretty good um i got bad mama right here uh, this is the one that um we had some trouble with interestingly enough these girls are starting to come back into heat um, so we're trying to get these pig piglets weaned off so that uh, we can get a boar in with these girls and get them rebred. Um, what we'll do is we'll make sure we get the we get all those piglets weaned off. We'll give them a couple of days, maybe a week or so, um, and then we'll we'll turn the boar in with them and let him do his thing. Um, still on 15 pounds per sow per day um, since they are lactating. The only problem is this one girl right here. Uh, who never did uh, go into heat for us so that we could breed her. Uh, she's taking she's taking advantage of that 15 pounds per pig per day. She's getting kind of big, so we're going to try to breed her one more time. If she don't take next round, then she's going to go to uh, go to processing. But uh, yeah, everybody out here is looking good, doing good. Um, back over here at the catch pen, looks like we've got uh, daggone, looks like we've just about got everybody in there right now, so hopefully we can get some more of them caught up tomorrow morning <clears throat> get them weaned off get them moved out got a couple of small ones still out over here i see them hiding out in the grass but uh yeah that'll get you run over right there so this one is in heat trying to mount that one and uh she wouldn't have no part of it these girls are getting a little fussy that's scary right there i thought i was gonna get run over by a pig get a lot of questions about how can I tell if my pig is in heat this pig is in heat um, I just drove side by side from all the way down there where the catch pen is up along the fence back on the road and out this way she has chased me the entire way so a couple things to notice here she does have some she was having some aggressive behavior a while ago she's the one that about ran me over she is uh, following along with us she has quite a bit of swelling to her vulva area knows how her ears are perked way up i've not sprayed her with any boar spray and i can sit on her back with all my weight and she is standing perfectly still so this girl is in standing heat right now so the ideal situation here would be to either have a boar in with her wish that i was prepared to move jack up here uh, or excuse me to move yeah to move jack up here 
we put jack in with these girls right now <clears throat> um or to have semen on hand to artificially inseminate we don't have that so some we got to get done we got to get it done this week get jack um potentially jack moved in with these girls if we can get the rest of these piglets weaned off that's a little bit of a concern i got to figure that out um but we uh we got these girls they're ready to re be rebred and uh, we got to get them get them lined up and get them ready to go and by the calendar she should come back in in three weeks so we'll um <laughs> mr i don't do well at documentation um we'll go back to the house right now uh and put that on the calendar or i'll pull my phone out put it on my calendar on the phone that uh standing heat today so we'll mark that out three weeks from today we would expect her to be back in standing heat again and uh, ready to be bred this is our group of young gilts um we've showed them a couple times before um a couple of these girls have come into heat over the past few days so uh, we got to get the boar up here with them um we wanted them to go through a heat cycle i think everybody has now gone through a heat cycle or is in the middle of one this girl right here she was the first one to go um, I think everybody now has had a heat cycle, so it's time to bring a bore up and put uh, put a bore in with them. So, yeah, this is pumpkin here. Yep, a little aggressive behavior. Um, I've noticed a lot, quite a bit of swelling in the vulva of these girls, particularly this one right here. She's very swollen tonight. This girl here, she's real swollen. She won't let us get around there to look. So, yeah, see there, they're ready. <laughs> Everybody's excited. Let's get out of the pen here. So we got to get a bore in with them. This girl here's kind of small, but I think she's going to catch up. And uh, we'll get these girls bred next. Fine specimen of a pig right there. Out here at the weaning pen. Um, like I say, we had a customer come by and pick up a couple piglets a little while ago. So we're uh, two less than we were. But these guys, well, we're not going to train very well on that electric like this. On your training pins, um, got to check them pretty frequently. Make sure you don't have something uh, leaning up, pressing up, or um, grounding out your wire. Um, so that everybody's, that the fence is staying good and hot and everybody's getting a shock whenever they're getting close to it. We, we've stood out and watched these uh, piglets for a little while. They are steering clear of the wire. Uh, we certainly wouldn't be ready to let them out on just a single wire yet. We'll keep them in here for a little bit. But uh, they're learning, getting the idea. They're getting fed. You know, we're feeding each side about 25 pounds um, per day, and that's more than, more than enough. We've uh, usually got a little residual left after, you know, half the day, and then by the next morning, everything's gone. So think we're feeding good i think we got a good feed regimen going on there this barrel drinker here is leaking like a sieve we're gonna have to trade that thing out uh over here's our breeder group everybody's kind of shy let's go back here and see if we can get a look at them but uh yeah they're they're coming along nice everybody's uh growing looking good got a bunch of females in here we're gonna keep out for breeding so really pleased with them and what they're doing so kind of dark in here again looking back i wish i would have uh put this pen where we had a little more vegetation and also here's a pro tip for you if you're going to put piglets into a weaning pen and then you're going to be catching those piglets to sell you're going to have customers coming by to pick those piglets up uh, you don't want a bunch of trees uh we we were catching a couple of piglets up for uh a fellow that came by earlier to uh pick his up and it was we had the devil of a time because we were trying to chase pigs and weave our way through a bunch of trees while we were trying to catch so another big lesson learned there and uh, you know we always say we're going to tell you the good the bad and the ugly of what goes on here so if you're putting pigs in a weaning slash training pen and you're going to be selling those pigs you're going to catch them later on um put them somewhere where you don't have to navigate through uh, a bunch of trees so but we're lively having a good time everybody's bouncing around been really pleased with these piglets. Everybody's just doing, everybody's doing fantastic. Doing good. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at on uh, on our breeding operation, farrowing. Uh, we're done with that for the spring. Um, went well overall. We took a few lumps on our head, but uh, I think we uh, have learned some lessons that we can apply going forward and can be more successful in the future 
with our farrowing operation. Um, it's always trial and error. We're always evaluating what we're doing here, trying to figure out how to do it a little bit better, be a little bit better, be more successful, uh, and do better by the animals. We wanna make sure that we're caring for them. So it's uh, time to rebreed. We're gonna rebreed uh, here in a few weeks, see if we can get some girls pregnant again. Uh, maybe have another farrowing, hopefully late September, early October, depending on when everybody, when everybody gets settled, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, Appreciate y'all watching. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Follow along with us. Uh, I'm going to post a link to a couple other videos over here, some other stuff we've got going on. And uh, remember to give us a thumbs up. We appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.